do we have what else do we have oh talking about that actually yeah we have this um again um i like the guy too so it's difficult to say all this sort of stuff in there about him because i don't know what's i don't really know what's going on behind the scenes and i'm sure there's more stuff to this than we actually are kind of you know privy to but um a clip surface so big up the homeless cats of um brian callan and sam tripoli's show which is I'm, I'm not sure if it's called a conspiracy power hour or something or something along those lines, right they've got a conspiracy podcast that's behind a paywall on patreon um it's the only way that brian callan gets to podcast he can't do it with brendan shaw i'm assuming because of some sort of contract um stipulation they tried to rename the fire and the kid the fire in the ring so that didn't work out so he ended up with sam tripoli right who um who was kind of adam who was kind of out there as one of maybe the only comics and again i don't think they were that close prior to this show as well so which is funny in that respect but sam tripoli was the only stand-up comic in that la in you know bubble who stepped out in front and said no i'm backing my friend he even went out front and stepped in front of the grenades for crystalia right he was quite forthright about defending him as well to a certain extent but you know still you have to give the guy credit right regardless of what you think of his views on conspiracies he's still a solid dude still a solid friend and a solid peer right in that industry so i kind of get the idea of doing a podcast of course you know it doesn't really make any sense considering that brian callan is you know super against uh, conspiracies but maybe that tension will make the show good so far from the clips i've seen it's not the best show i think sam tripley does a much better job on tinfoil hat I think Brian Brian Callan does a far better job on obviously the Fire and the Kid when he was previously there. So if anything, they're doing they're both doing themselves this service by doing this show. And like I said prior, Brian Callan's forte and skill is being a silly goose, not trying to dissect conspiracies. That aside, this clip arose of them two speaking and somehow they mentioned uh Crystalia and for some reason Brian Callan really, really went out of his way to distance himself from Chris again. And I don't know why this is. I don't know why this keeps happening. I don't know why he keeps trying to um, make it seem as if him and Chris O'Leary were never friends. When if you're a fan of the podcast, if you're a fan of all those people in the other comedy scene, you'd know that Brian Callan and Chris D'Elia go way back from the 10 minute podcast era when they were around each other nearly every other day they obviously gave the impression that they were really good friends they performed skits with each other they were turning up you know impromptly at each other's shows and just you know talking about each other on every other, other podcast mentioning people's names mentioning funny stories how cool maybe in his head for Brian Callan's head that's not friendship but to me or to anyone else looking from the outside spending that much time around somebody picking up their mannerisms working on various projects they even had a netflix show prior to the allegations that they were both working on with netflix a prank show that got scrapped because of the allegations so to now turn you turn around and say you're not friends is really really odd but let me play the clip of uh brian Cannon saying so much now and I'll give some more thoughts on the other side no he i would i would come I, oh he's great he's like a co he's a pure comedian yeah i don't know i the thing is i i got i'm so old that i would i would come i'd come in and out yeah, that's how you do. That's like with Delia. Like people thought I, I hung out with Chris all the time uh, on the outside of. I never hung out with Chris once. Yeah. I why are you doing this? Like why? Like again, is this his? We d we don't know what's going on, but is this just an indication of just how much pressure is on him at the moment? Which you know, again, not reading anyone's pockets, but if you believe what you read on the internet, you would be led to believe, uh, or even what Brian Callan said himself, he's from a very well-off family. It's not as if you know this isn't like somebody with no connections to hollywood right if he essentially gets cancelled he's fine he could still be fine right i'm sure there's going to be moments in his life where he's going to have to you know do something else in terms of career wise to support his family but in terms of him being desolate and on the streets that's never going to happen right he's pretty well off so the stakes are not maybe as high as other people now again that's maybe um out of order to say because who's to you know who am i to judge what stakes are what stakes are important and what aren't important he committed you know his entire life to making it in hollywood he just about got there and now he's been pulled away he's gonna do everything he can to fight to hold on to it but what how is this helping his case by coming out and saying this about chris or by coming out and dissing himself in this way how what is this really changing it's not changing anything because it's not as if he's not as if he's being accused of being an enabler it's not as if he's being accused of just sitting by idly and allowing chris to you know um solicit um nudes and whatever it may be from underage girls allegedly that's not the allegation the allegation is nothing of the sort if anything his allegations are much more serious of allegations than what chris has been accused of he's been accused of rape in brian cannon's case 
Chris Lee has been accused of being a creep and potentially maybe talking to girls underage. But if you look into the allegations, that's not necessarily the case. Does Chris have a type? Yes. Is that type um, close to underage? Yes. Are they all underage? No. He has plenty of accounts or encounters with women where they were of age, but he he didn't, you know, like I said prior, the issue with Chris is that he just didn't treat him like a, he wasn't a gentleman, right? He was a bit of a douche. He didn't go out of his way to show these girls a quote unquote good time. He was just after one thing. Now, again, is that anything to judge a man upon? No, it's none of our business. We don't know what these guys have to go through being as famous as they are, having to tour all these. No, again, it sounds like woe is me, but you know, again, we're not in these people's shoes. But to somehow, I wouldn't imagine Brian Cannon could be in any position to distance himself from Chris Alia, especially when you, I'm saying, and I think, in my opinion, Brian Cannon's allegations, um, again, only allegations, are far worse than whatever Chris Alia has been accused of. So, and again, this isn't going to save his career. This, again, my opinion, I don't know, maybe his agents, which he doesn't have anymore, right? He's not represented by anyone at CAA anymore. I don't, I, again, it's, it's just odd. I had dinner with Chris exactly one time at Swingers at 11 at night, but I never, I never spent time socially with Chris, you know, I, or I anybody. Just, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm I just don't old. think that exists. Whatever. And again, what's the context of this, of this conversation? At a certain age in comedy. What's the context of the conversation? Like, they don't go out with each other. The conversations and the kind of kinship and the rapport that they have on podcasts is all just made up for show. Cool. Let's imagine that's the case. But part of the reason why these guys are successful, part of the reason why they're at the top of their game is because they built a little network um, of friends. And that's why some of the New York comics probably hate them a lot because it's quite incestuous, right? They sort of all scratched each other's back. If it's beneficial for one or the other, they'll appear on each other's show. They'll, you know, they'll, you know, uh, purport to be friends on social media. They'll do all these things and play nice just so that they can boost their own profiles and allow them, you know, to maneuver and get what they need to get to in their career. And that's okay. As fans, I think most we kind of not understand that and we kind of see through all those kind of things but we don't have any issue with it because at the end of the day it gets it provides us with more content and it provides us with more laughs right watching this free stuff that we get to see and it gives us an idea of what we maybe are going to expect if we go see them do an actual stand-up show but i don't see personally again i don't see what this distancing from brian cannon is going to do any bit any positive anything well for his career whatsoever People have made up their minds already about him. People have decided that he's a creep. People have kind of got up footage of his previous shows, previous comments, and decided that, hey, this story that I've heard matches up with the guy that's doing a podcast. He's guilty. Now, is that right? No, of course not. The same thing's happened to Crystal Lear, right? People are seeing how he basically goes on and bringing up, sto bringing up allegations or stories from other people that have said on podcasts to be funny. They've matched up with the allegations and said, yep, he's guilty. People are even saying by Crystal Lear that because he played uh a sex a pedophile right a pedo on bloody um you that somehow that made him guilty like that's how crazy it got so for brian to sit there and somehow think um saying behind a paywall right on a podcast that probably not a lot of people listen to outside of t5k fans that he's not friends with chris Alia and they only hung out once is preposterous absolutely preposterous no one believes that even if that is the case what is that doing to help him again i don't believe it for one moment because i know their history from a fan's point of view it's impossible that they weren't friends right they were and they were very close but you know you don't know everything about your friends even if what is said is true about chris Alia, that you can't judge him for it right just because you're friends no one's gonna think that you're a pedo as well but as again you have your own allegations to deal with that are far worse than this guy and again even if it is true i keep saying it again all the time even if it is true right even if everything he's saying is true and it didn't hang out with each other what is this going to do for his career and i would argue absolutely nil nothing no one's going to turn around and say oh we got it completely wrong brian callan you were right all along you're an angel you didn't tell that girl now you can be my now i'm going to be your boyfriend or girlfriend or have allegation you didn't come out in flipping underwear in that changing room you didn't do all those things that you're accused of um none of this stuff is true we apologize we take it back that's not gonna happen go back on your show go back on tour um sit down with joe rogan again that's not gonna happen no one's gonna say that and that's not the case and again you'd wish there'd be a little bit more <laughs> it's it's interesting that i get a lot more agitated about it. i don't even know these people but you wish there'd be a lot more not even loyalty um whatever it may be just yeah maybe loyalty and friendship you don't need to keep you don't even even if someone mentions it just don't talk about it you're his friend you can just say no comment you can just move it along 
You don't need to constantly, um, you know, separate yourself and distance yourself from him just because you don't want the stink. Um, you don't want his mark to be on you or anything. Because like I said, I generally think his com allegations are far worse than Chris's. And even Chris's allegations are bad, how bad, he's the one that has to, you know, face up to his allegations, not you. It's not as if people are going to judge you based on what he'd done. It's really, really odd, man. But again, let me know in the comments down below. Did I get it all wrong? Do you think... Why do you think, actually, yeah, that's a question. Why do you think Brian's even doing this? Why is he distancing himself from Chris Alea when he has the far worse allegations? Or do you believe Chris Alea's allegations are worse than what Brian did? And why is he doing this? Will he save his career? Will he ever come back from this anyway, regardless? And if he does, is this the right way to go about it? Let me know in the comments down below.